Planet Dolan. From the world's most remote airfield to the many, many ways you can die trying to land near Mount Everest, we look at nine of the world's most dangerous airports. Hey there guys, I'm Danger Dolan's mysterious brother. I'm here to blow your mind with academic research, insight, and other dark magic. Number 9. Normally when people drive down the main street of their city they don't have to give way to a landing plane, but in the small British territory of Gibraltar this is considered an everyday occurrence. For some reason they decided it was 100% safe to have a main street and the runway intersect because, hey, what's the worst that could happen, right? It kind of works like a railway crossing where the road is closed off while a jumbo jet takes to the sky. Apparently the system works though, and while incredibly dangerous, there has never been an accident because of it. Yet. Number 8. One of the most iconic airports is actually one that you might want to avoid. If you can, that is. LAX has consistently been named as one of the USA's most dangerous airports. In 1988, a survey of American pilots listed LAX as the most unsafe place to land, and it received a black star rating from the International Federation of Airline Pilots. In 2011, it was rated the third most dangerous for runway incidents, having 60 incidents over the course of five years. So what causes all the problems? Traffic. Just like the rest of LA, LAX is incredibly busy, as is the sky above it. It seems like everything in California is just a disaster movie waiting to happen. Number 7. Ever heard of a pop-up airport? Well, this is one of them. Black Rock City Airport exists exclusively for Burning Man. Now why a temporary airport in the middle of the desert, only being there for an event that has a motto of safety third, might be a little risky? Probably doesn't need explaining. But it's mainly unsafe due to high turbulence, dust storms, rocky terrain, and the plane bouncing as it tries to land on the runway. Planes have reportedly flipped over while trying to land. In 2003, two planes were destroyed, resulting in one fatality. Yeah, look, hippies, you should probably just drive to Burning Man in your biofuel VW vans. Number 6. And if landing in the desert is hard, just wait till I tell you about the problems with landing on a runway made of ice and snow. McMurdo Station in Antarctica has three different airfields, but they all occupy the same dangerous environment. One of the airfields, Pegasus, is named after an aircraft that crashed there. In fact, it's still there, buried in the snow. Talk about good omens! The constantly unstable weather conditions and pitch black darkness are just the cherry on top of trying to land a huge aircraft on ice. But hey, it's not like you're ever going to the South Pole, right? Number 5. Imagine trying to land a plane on one of the smallest commercial runways in the world, which features rocky cliffs at both ends. This tiny airstrip on Sabah Island in the Caribbean is only 1300 feet long, so for a bit of context, a normal airport is about 6,000 feet long. This means that only light aircraft can dare attempt the risky landing. The cliffs at both ends feature a straight drop into the ocean, so overshooting the runway means you're going for a swim. There's also no air traffic controller here, but I somehow doubt there's much of a queue for an attempted landing. Number 4. After World War II, the US decided to put a marine air station right slap bang in the middle of Okinawa, which in hindsight was probably a mistake. Not that having a base on the island is dangerous, it's just that the airfield is surrounded by houses, schools, hospitals, and a crap ton of people. The village of Ginawan that surrounded the base quickly became a city, leading to the Marine Corps calling it the most dangerous air station in the world. This is of course because if anything goes wrong on a takeoff or landing, there's a high chance of damage to the surrounding city. Currently there are negotiations between Japan and the US to move the base to, you know, anywhere that won't put civilians at risk. Number 3. Remember that thing I said about normal runways being 6,000 feet long? Well this one is 1,700 feet and it's in the top of the French Alps. While slightly longer than Sabah Island's runway, Courchevel has an added feature of putting it on a hill. So, even if you make the perilous journey flying through the mountains, you still need to hit the landing at just the right angle, otherwise you'll basically crash and die. But this airport almost exclusively serves rich people who want to go to the adjacent ski resort, so you'll probably never have to worry about that. Number 2. Navigating through the Himalayas in a passenger jet isn't something that sounds safe at all. And this particular airport, Paro, is so difficult to approach that only 8 pilots in the world are actually certified to even try the death-defying landing. Requiring hard S maneuvers through high, unpredictable winds make this even harder to perform. 
One rogue breeze could get you a premature meeting with the ground. Landings aren't allowed at night or even in cloudy conditions as pilots rely more on eyesight than instrument readings. Still, despite this, Paro sees 30,000 tourists come through every year and some say the takeoff is even worse than the landing. Number 1 And finally we come to the almost universally agreed upon number 1, Lukla Airport in Nepal. Situated almost 3,000 metres above sea level, this vision of death incarnated as an airport features a 1,600 foot runway, constantly unstable weather, and is bookended with a mountain at one end and a 2,000 foot drop on the other. Can't slow down while landing? Well, just try your best not to smash into the mountain, and due to the high altitude, you only get one shot at trying to land. It's that or crash. Of course, the opposite problem happens on takeoff, where insufficient speed will see your plane plummet down to a fiery death off a cliff. So why do people keep going there? Well, usually to climb Mount Everest, one of the most dangerous mountains in the world. I heard on the flight they also usually have some of the most dangerous in-flight entertainment and snacks in the world, just to stay consistent. So guys, what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you while traveling? Let us know on the Reddit page link below and you might be featured in a future countdown. Well, that's it for this countdown, but catch you guys next time. The area also has a massive erosion problem because tourists like to wander off where they're not supposed to. To remedy this, the Peruvian government has limited the number of visitors to just 2,500 a day. Come on, guys, I know they're called ruins, but that doesn't mean you have to ruin them. This is why we can't have nice things.